Winning is better than losing. I think most people would agree with that statement. What I'm here to tell you about today is that success is better than winning, even if you have to lose to achieve it. Before starting my talk, though, I want to tell you three things about myself. Number one, I am highly competitive. I hate to lose, and I love winning. Number two, I love talking about physics. I love teaching physics, whether it's the physics of football, whether it's the physics of Star Wars, aliens, whatever it might be. I even love doing the physics of blocks sliding down inclined planes, which is the number one place we lose potential physics majors. <laughs> number three, I actually, despite loving competition, loving to win, loving teaching, I hate giving grades, and I really, really hate failing students. And it is this space of grades where at the university, I believe success and winning come together in an interesting fashion. For myself, one of those experiences was when I applied to graduate school. Now, I decided to do what everybody should do and apply to the best graduate schools in physics around, so I applied to all of them. And some of them, in fact, essentially all of them rejected me. Some of them wanted me so badly, well, actually, no, they didn't. They decided, Michael, we really don't want you. Just to make sure, we're going to send you three rejection letters. So I applied once, and Stanford rejected me three times. Um, <laughs> Berkeley, they were you know, thinking, waffling a little. They only sent me two rejection letters. Those are true stories. But you look at that, those were losses from one particular position. And yet here I am, I would argue, at least somewhat of a success. I'm a vice provost, I'm a professor of physics at UC Irvine, one of the best universities in the entire world. So where did that success come from despite, despite a major loss? Well, if we're gonna get there, we need to think about the difference between winning and success. Now winning, I think we all understand, particularly from sports. Winning, there can only be one. You have a competition, it's a zero-sum game, there's a single winner. We're familiar maybe in the Olympics where you actually give out three medals, gold, silver, bronze. This is a picture of my brother from the Special Olympics with his gold medals. He was a winner. He's also very successful, two different things. But even in the Olympics, there's only one gold medalist, one winner. Now, people sometimes get uneasy with this, this idea of winning, and so we've invented the participation medal. And that's particularly strong in youth sports. And even there, we get a little nervous. Like, that doesn't seem quite right. We just give you a medal or a trophy just for participating. And at our core, I think we have a good instinct. Participation is not enough. You need a goal. Now, often in youth sports, the goal is having fun, which is a great goal. Most of my life, that is my goal. If I have fun, I've been successful. But we really understand success is when you've achieved a goal. And it's very different than winning. And when you think about success, you realize there's an unlimited amount of success out there. Winning, there can only be one. But with success, when you think about your goal and you think about how to work at it and how to achieve it, anyone and everyone can achieve that goal of success. I really wanted to be able to explain to you in clear terms this difference between winning and success. And I was thinking, how can I do that? And I realized, let's think about being chased by a bear. So we all know, or many of us have heard, that if you're being chased by a bear, so I'm going to be chased by a bear, I don't actually have to be faster than the bear, I just have to be faster than you. Makes sense. But I've turned what should be about success into something about winning. I've made getting away from the bear, which is success, about winning a race with you. And in doing that, I may have made a critical error. Because this bear may be pretty smart. It may just knock you over and out and then keep chasing me. I've already admitted to being slower than the bear. That won't lead to success on my part. The bear may just not like slow people and may ignore you and come right after me. Again, I'm not very successful. I won my race with you, but lost with the bear. Now, if I'm clever, 
Maybe I pay attention. Maybe there's a cabin nearby that the bear can't get into, can't work doorknobs, I can. But it's just far enough away that the bear would catch me anyway. But if I work with you and we work together as a team, we can fool the bear, trick it, use our skills, get to the cabin, and both be successful. I didn't have to win a race with you. And notice a key element came in that's often there in success, teamwork. When we talk about winners, we tend to focus on the person who won. And there's always a team behind them. And that often gets overlooked. True success usually comes with that teamwork. There's another aspect of success that comes from losing that I want to discuss. And for that, we have to go to the classic Star Wars movie. Now, as I said, I like to talk physics. I like to talk physics of Star Wars. Here, we're going to talk winning, success, and losing. I've been told there may be a few people in the audience who do not know who Obi-Wan Kenobi and Darth Vader are. It's unlikely, but just in case, brief recap. Obi-Wan, the master, trained Anakin Skywalker. Things didn't go very well, became Darth Vader. Darth Vader in black is the bad guy in the movie. They meet. Obi-Wan is still the master. They have a major lightsaber battle. We know Obi-Wan can still win despite some gray in the beard. That's not a problem. But he chooses to lose and even warns Darth Vader. Right? My loss here, I'm going to come back stronger and greater than you can ever imagine. Now, some of us are thinking, OK, that's familiar. In games of strategy, we often take a strategic loss to get a win later on. But I would argue there's more than that going on here. Obi-Wan recognized that often the path to success involves navigating losses in important and clever ways. What does this mean for the university? When, I'm a vice provost of teaching and learning. When you think about a university, we, are, we have a slight danger when it comes to winning versus success. Because at our core, we're about success. We're, we're about teaching and helping students who will then graduate and go on and be successful and impact society and make it even more successful. But the nature of giving grades leads to a mentality of ranking. And the ranking mentality leads to a, a mentality of winners and losers and that zero-sum game. Both as universities, if we get caught up in the rankings of who we are and whether we're better, and for individuals and students. And this has two important implications, both at what I would call the input level and the output level. So input is getting students to the university. With my own kids, I really wanted them to focus not on this idea of getting into the best school by rankings or worried about being the best student by rankings, but matching themselves to the school that would maximize their success. What does this mean? It means, well, if you don't like big schools, find a small school. Decide whether you'd rather be in a city or in the country or in a suburb. Make sure they have majors that you're interested in. Look at the whole school. And if you do that, you can find a place where you're going to be happy. And being happy is one of the first steps to being successful. If you're totally unhappy, it's very hard to be successful. But the other piece of matching, make sure you're challenged. Find a school that's going to challenge you, because if you're not going to be challenged, you're not going to grow. So this idea of matching becomes key. And that's something we have to figure out as a society how to transform so that we're not just about the best and who is the best in ranking when we do college admissions. The other place where we have to think about this is on the output side. We send students out to be successful. And yet our system, like most systems of winning, is designed around controlled tests, controlled essays, controlled assessments that don't necessarily match perfectly the open conditions that students will face after they graduate. And because of these controlled natures, they look a little more like sports and games where winning might be more relevant. And we do things like we report the average GPA of a student. Well, think about this for a moment. You have the straight-A student. Nothing wrong with being a straight-A student. So if any of you are in the audience, I'm not making fun of you. But the straight-A student is an interesting person. They've come in, they got A's right away, they get A's the whole way through. As an employer looking at that student, I don't necessarily have a full picture of them. I don't know if they've been challenged. I don't know what will happen if they get challenged. Now imagine the student comes in and starts out with C's, but manages through their four-year or five-year or three-year career here to end up with A's. They've proven they can master something. They've proven they can face difficult situations. They can look inside themselves, figure out what they need to do. They can face an open question. How do I get from where I am now to something bigger and better? 
and overcome it. So as a potential employer, that's someone I know has certain skills and mindsets and work ethics. And yet, as a university, we tend to report an average GPA, and we think in terms of winning and ranking, and the straight A student comes out higher than the student that had C's and then A's. So these are the sort of questions we need to ask ourselves as a university as we move forward, as we focus on success and not necessarily winning. So how do we know the difference between winning and success? I think winning is the obvious one. We've already talked about it. You have rules and games and somebody wins. Success, I would recommend you ask yourself three questions. The first question, let's return to our participation medal. The first key question is, did you participate appropriately? Did you participate with the right goals in mind? Did you really engage? So for a student, you might think you're participating if you show up to class, but if you're watching YouTube on your computer, you're not participating, unless it's a YouTube video of me. <laughs> now, if you are participating and engaging, that's the first step to success. The second thing, goals. Make sure your goals are correct. Make sure you've identified appropriate and reasonable goals. Think about it again from the student perspective. If you're going to a research competition and you're going to be pitching some research and competing, it might look like the goal is winning. Now, winning that competition is great. It would be wonderful to do it, but only one person wins. You can all be successful because what it's really about is learning how to answer those questions, be grilled on your research, think on your feet. So when you're in an interview situation for your first job, you get that job. That's what the right goal is, and that's success. And the third one, make sure you have your fans still. Now, why do I say that? Why do I suddenly talk about fans? Well, let's think for a moment about those sports franchises that never win. You all know who they are. I'm not going to point fingers, OK? These sports franchises that never win have some of the most loyal fans I've ever seen in my life, often more loyal than the teams that win. And it's these loyal fans that make them successful. They may not win a lot of championships, but they still get money to pay their players, to play their staff, to have their stadium, and their fans still enjoy going to the games. So it's the fans that can bring success. Who are your fans? They're your mentors, your professors, your um, um, bosses, your coaches, your friends, your family, the people who help you get to success. So how does this work in the university, these three questions? Well, I think at UCI, we actually do quite well. We are doing very well focused on student success. But that question two is the key one. Do we have our right goals in front of us? Because at the end of the day, we are about graduating students who have skills like critical thinking, complex problem solving, working in diverse teams, being independent learners, great communicators, ethical decision makers, the skills that are critical if democracy is going to be successful. If our society is going to be successful, if our students are going to be successful, those are the skills we need to impart, and we need to stay focused on that as a university. For me, in my own life, my Obi-Wan Kenobi moment where I lost was a key turning point. And I had to ask myself those three questions. Did I participate appropriately? Luckily, I had, because I had applied to a safety school. So when all the top schools rejected me, I still had a grad school to go to. Did I have the appropriate goals? Initially, no. Initially, it was just getting to the best school. What I didn't know was I got into UC Santa Barbara, and the type of research being done there was different. It was new. It was not what was being done at the other schools. It's what I actually ended up in and was that first step to my successful career. So I actually needed that one. I needed that a little bit better. What about my fans? Well, I had my family and friends that helped me get through three rejection letters for one application. But more importantly, I had professors and mentors who came to me, asked me where I was going. They knew this fact about Santa Barbara, that it matched me better. And having that information and getting it at that moment gave me the confidence that, OK, this is going to work out. This is the right place to go. So for you, how does this work out in your life? When you have that moment of loss, maybe it's just a date gone bad. Maybe it's a pitch competition that didn't go well. Maybe as a student, it's failing a test, failing a class. Ask yourself these three questions. Question one, did I participate appropriately? That can be anything from did you challenge yourself, but did you have a safety net? Did you get involved? Did you engage? Question two, do you have the right goals? Are you focused on the right things in the event or whatever is going on with the loss? Most importantly, question three, where are your fans? Do you still have your fans? Engage them, get that support, and move on to the next step. If you ask yourself these three questions, you too can turn a loss 
into success, which is much better than winning. Thank you.